Hey, what's up guys? Andy here at MVP Java. So today I want to shed some light on this new preview feature that came out in Java 14, uh, basically upgrading how we can use the instance of operator. Okay, so over here I'm using a traditional for loop to loop through the list that was passed in. And then I check, right? I say, well, if it's an instance of hydroelectricity, there's really three things that are going on here that we keep having to repeat. I'm going to go over this boilerplate template that we keep having to go through. One is the predicate, the test, right? So that's this guy over here. We're, we're actually using it in an if statement. And if it's true, we come in this branch and we perform an explicit cast, right? Now, so casting has always been kind of an ugly thing to do. But, you know, you could also get it wrong. You can actually mistakenly, you know, put some other cast in there, or another type in there, rather. And you're only going to know about it at runtime. So you can get an actually runtime exception thrown in your face if you're not sure uh, or if you made a mistake of what type to cast to, right? Sometimes it's not that obvious. So, and then third thing is, is you actually have to create an instance, not an instance variable, but a local variable. Right? So you got the predicate, you got the cast, and you got the local variable that you have to do. Those are the three things, the boilerplate things that you keep having to do when you're using the instance of a variable. And when you see it again, here's the predicate, here's the cast, oops, excuse me, here's the cast, and here's the local variable. Right? So, so this is just regular stuff right? for the instance of. We all kind of are, are, are used to kind of writing code like this with the instance of. Now what we're going to do is if you scroll up here, you'll notice I call um, another method, right? that's pre, uh, appended, appended with Java 14 here. So we're gonna be using the new instance of feature, the preview feature, right? And uh, we're passing in the same list over here. So let's take a look at what the difference is, what's been enhanced, right? So same code, except you see here, uh, something new that got appended after the type of the instance of, right? You, you see that that's not, that's not here, right? You just kind of ended off here. So this is actually a binding variable. So what happened in Java 14 through this preview feature is they've added pattern matching capabilities to the instance of operator, okay? Now what pattern matching does is does two things really, it consists of two things. One, it consists of a predicate that is acting on a target. So this instance of is a predicate, returns true or false, and the target, right, is hydroelectricity. So that's the first thing. The second thing is a pattern matcher will have a set of binding uh, variables acting on a target, right? So meaning that the value will get extracted from the target and placed in that binding variable if the predicate is successful, meaning that if the instance of returns true, it'll take the actual type, right, and actually put it inside hydroelectricity. So this actually removes the need for us to create a local variable. It does that for us. Now, because this is not, like I was saying, a set of binding variables, this is just one binding variable. You don't see like comma or you know some other ones there. This falls under a special category of pattern matching called a target test pattern. So this actually is a target test pattern, which is a pattern matcher that's been applied to the instance of, you'll notice that there is no local variable there, right? Like there was here, okay? And you'll notice there's no cast, right? It has handled the cast for you. So now you don't have that runtime exception that's gonna happen. So we've reduced the boilerplate code. We've enhanced the possibility of a runtime exception being thrown. So those are really good things. So they've done a really good job here. It's just adding another, you know, a binding variable here. That's nothing. It really streamlines that. I, I like the way they did that. Okay. Now, that concludes instance of. Now, there's some scoping rules in there. Nothing groundbreaking. Nothing, you know, really complicated. But if you really want to go into uh, more of the scoping rules, you can take a look at JEP, right? The enhanced enhanced proposal here. I have a link to it in the description and in the blogs as well. Um, you know, they go through the scoping rules a little bit. The other thing that it's really nice for is for equals methods where you're kind of using this kind of instance of thing. 
and also a, your own equality method. So it really you know, clarifies or, or improves the realability of those equality methods and it allows you to write really nice, con concise one-liner return statements as well. So overall, a good job. Now, hold up, right? This is the whole point of my uh, video and blog is that I actually don't want this kind of code in this specific situation, right? This is procedural code in an OO language, object-oriented language, right? So what will happen if I add another electricity provider? Let's say coal-powered electricity provider, right? I would have to come in here, right? And I would have to add another ELSIF branch, right? What if I had another one, another LSF branch? You see where I'm going? This thing is not becoming very maintainable. It's very procedural. It's a procedural construct in an OO world, right? And if you let this grow out of hand, you're going to find yourself copy pasting this somewhere else, right? So, you know, it's not really the path you want to go down. So what are the options? You know, when to use instance of, when to not use instance of, and if I don't want to use it, what can I do, right? So let me cover when to use instance of. Let's say you're using a third-party library, right? That's been designed a certain way, you can't change it, right? And you got to figure out if an object being returned by that library is an instance of an, a, a specific type. Yeah, perfect, use instance of. If it's legacy code, that you don't have any uh, control over, you can't change, you don't have the budget to change it, you don't have the authority, uh, the mandate to change it. Yes, you can use the instance of as well, right? So this is where the Java 14 preview feature is really gonna shine, okay? In this specific case that I actually have gone over with you, you don't even need the instance of operator. And that's the whole point of my video. Before you jump all over this, right, know that there are alternatives. In this case, a better OO design using polymorphism would eliminate the need of instance of, and you wouldn't have to continuously modify with extra LSIF branches this code, okay? So I'm gonna show you that in this video. Another option you have, if you're in control of the design again, and the code, your own code, is you can use the visitor design pattern. Now I'm not gonna go through the visitor design pattern here because that's very, a very well documented pattern. There's some trade-offs for sure. It's not, a, it's not for everyone, it's not for every use case, uh, but it is another option for you too before thinking of using the instance of. There's, there's some pros and cons to that pattern as well, but it's an option, okay, in certain situations as well. So how do we actually go through you know, using polymorphism here. So my example was actually, you know, designed on purpose <laughs> to um, not be a good design. Okay, so don't follow this design that I did. Uh, but you're gonna see that. And like, if this was a code review right now, like I would flag this and say, hey, you know, what, what's with this, you know, if, else, if, else, and all this kind of, everything I explained to you, I would have flagged it. So let me show you over here. I'm still using, you know, I got this polymorphism uh, sub package here. I'm still gonna use the electricity model. Yeah, that, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But then I created these other classes with the number two tacked on just to, you know, uh, differentiate them. You'll see that this is an interface. Now, it's an interface because I wanna have a common, um, you know, I, I don't really know how to implement this. I'm not gonna come up with a default implementation anyways. Uh, and I want the implementations to decide how to generate electricity, right? And every implementation will be like an else if, okay? So you'll see how I won't even have to create an else if or the instance of. So here's hydro electricity two in this case, right? That's implementing that interface and it's implementing that abstract method. So you'll notice that this is the same code that was in the previous design okay it's just now we're using a different design over here we're using polymorphism okay so here's the other one for nuclear power if we go back to our main method now let me scroll up now on this second half of the main method you'll notice i do the same thing i, I instantiate those two implementations using the interface as the type that's fine 
I create a list of that type. And once again, I use the list dot of method to create that list. And I pass the list to a new private method called loop through provider with polymorphism. Now take a look at this guys. It's basically, you know, there is no procedural code there, right? So what I'm doing is I'm even going a step further. I'm not writing my own for loop, right? I'm using basically streams. And I'm taking advantage of, you know, having that loop written for me, you know, so I don't have any errors writing the loop. That's even better. It's streamlined to just, you know, I'm not telling it how to do it. I'm telling it what to do. So in this case here, I'm just saying generate electricity for every electrical provider in that list, just generate the electricity. There is no if, else if, there is no instance of, I don't need to to know what the instance of is in this case because I'm using polymorphism, right? Compile time versus runtime behavior. So at runtime, this E object, right? It already knows that at compile time, it is of type electricity provider, two in this case, but at runtime, it is of type hydroelectricity two, right? So we're letting you know Java handle all this for us. We don't have to do anything. This is uh, VMI, virtual method indication at its best. Okay. So this is what you want to strive for. So this is my whole point of this video. Instance of great, good job, but wait up, hold up. Can we do better in our own code? Right. I already identified the cases when to use it. In this case, we don't even need it. All right. So there you have it, guys. Some advice on using this new preview feature. Whether it's gonna make it officially in the next release, Java 15, we don't know, right? So there's the Amber list. If you have some feedback on this preview feature that you have to enable, if you take a look at the palm.xml file, again, this is all on my GitHub here, I'm using the minus minus enable preview feature, right? So it's not on by default, you gotta switch it on here. Same thing on the command line if you wanted to run this with a jar file, okay? So you would say minus minus preview feature. And one thing left to say here, uh, I wanted to talk about, yeah, I already mentioned that it's on the GitHub, okay? So you can get all that, even the polymorphism solution there on GitHub. You can also go on my Twitter for some, uh, for some news that I have and also subscribe and like the channel if you'd like. So there you go. Use that advice to uh, good use. And until next time, I will be getting the next one ready, guys. Take care. Ciao.